Hello there, I'm John from Nixon Gaming, and today I want to give you a little tutorial on um, how to implement in-app purchases in Unity using the Google Play Console. And then I'll talk a little bit about it afterwards. So to get started, you first, of course, need a Unity project. And you want to go to your Window Package Manager. In the Package Manager, you should go to the Packages Unity Registry, and then look down to the eyes for in-app purchasing. You should make sure that that is installed. If it is installed, then the button below should say Remove, and you do not want to remove it. If it is not installed, then you should see an Install button, just like this. And you'll also see a green check mark, which says this package is installed when hovered over. So that's the first step, is to install that package. Next, you should go to Edit, Project Settings, Services, In-App Purchasing, and then you'll see this On-Off button, and you'll want to click it so it is on. You do not have to enter a Unity Analytics code, and as long as it's on, that's fine. After you get to this point, you should create a build for your, an Android build for your game. Of course, following the Google Play specifications, such as in your build settings, turning on the build app bundle, and in your player settings, let's go back to edit project settings to the player settings. In your other settings, in the player settings, you should be using the latest target API level. You should have your scripting back into IL2CPP, and you should at least select ARM64, but I find that I must also use ARM v7 as well. After you have that build finished, you can go to the Google Play Console, where you will need to add the release to either production, open testing, closed testing, internal testing, or pre-registration. You do not need to actually publish the release, but you do need to add the release to your Google Play Console. If you do not add a release, then when you go down to Monetize, Products, In-App Products, instead of seeing the screen that you see here, you may see a screen like this, where it says your app doesn't have any in-app products yet. To add in-app products, you need to add the billing permission to your APK. And to add the billing permission, you need to turn on the in-app purchases that I just talked about. Now, adding products is as simple as clicking the Create Product button and filling out the form. The form comes with a product ID, which can only contain lowercase letters, numbers 0 through 9, and underscore or periods. You cannot use characters or you cannot use capital letters, and you cannot use special characters like dollar signs or hashtags or pound signs. Then you should provide a name. The name is what the player will see when they go to purchase this product. So it should be descriptive and short. Then you have a description where you can add a more detailed description about it. Then we see a default price. The default price you can set in any currency, but I recommend using the currency that you expect to receive money in. There is also a multi-quantity button that you can only use after you've set a price. And as it says, it allows users to purchase more than one of this product in a single transaction. So in the video that I showed at the beginning of this video, I showed a product with a multi-quantity added to it so people could buy it many times at once. Finally, there's a tax compliance and program section if that matters for your country or business. And finally, at the end of everything, you do need to click Save. 
If you go back without saving, then nothing will be saved and you will lose the work that you just did. Okay, now we will go and look at the script in just a second, but please note, the product name that I have is called Buy Me A Coffee. My product ID is buy underscore me underscore a underscore coffee and the price is about one US dollar. Now let's look at my script for how I actually used all of this. First, I extend from mono behavior and the iDetailed store listener. You might notice that I'm also extending from iPointer click handler, but that just turns this into a button without needing to assign button features. Then I track my button, which I call my buy me a coffee button, and when people click this button, it calls this script and it will open up the purchasing. I also have my notification controller which is a separate script that I made myself to notify the users about things. Then I have a string called buy me a coffee which contains the ID buy underscore me underscore a underscore coffee. If you have multiple product IDs such as if you're if you can if you allow them to purchase 2,000 coins, 5,000 coins, 10,000 coins, 90,000 coins like that, then I recommend using something called an enum. With an enum, you can easily list it like product, one, product ID 1, product ID 2, product ID 3, and then you would just call it like store IDs dot product 1 dot 2 string, and it would work as a string, and it's very simple. Other variables that I have is the iStore controller, and you must have this to control the store. I also have iExtension provider. However, as you see, I don't actually use my extension provider in this um, demo. Then I keep an empty product. The product ex extends from the Unity Engine purchasing class or Unity Engine Purchasing Namespace, probably. Okay, so now let me walk you through everything step by step. First, in my start function, when everything begins, I say my buy me a coffee button is set active to true. Then I will await my Unity services initialize async. If you notice, my start button is also an async start instead of a normal start. Then I say configuration builder builder is equal to my configuration builder dot instance dot standard purchasing module instance. And this is bound to change uh, since the last time I did this, it since the time I did this previously, it did change. But once you know the outline, it's easy enough to go to the Unity docs and spend a few hours figuring out how to do it on your own. Next, I take my configuration builder and then I add, product, I add a product to it. You'll need to do this with every product that you have. So I provide my product ID and then I provide the product type. The product type I believe there are three of them. If you type product type, oh, if you can type, and then press the period, we should see that we have consumable products, non-consumable products, and subscription products. Consumable means it's something that you can use in-game. A potion, for example, is consumable. Um, coins are consumable or money is consumable. Non-consumable things, however, would be something like a one-time advertisement removal or unlocking game assets. Those are non-consumable. And then the subscription is something that would need to be purchased over and over again after a time period. 
So you just need to say the product ID and what type of product are they actually purchasing. Then you need to say Unity Purchasing dot initialize this and your builder. This would refer to your iDetailed store listener. So if you for some odd reason want to split these up, that is what you would need. You would need the script that extends from iDetailed store listener. Now, all of this requires internet access. If you do not have internet access, this will throw an exception, which is why I have it in a try and catch. In the case that an exception is thrown, it is almost always because of a lack of internet connection, in which case I just turn off my button and I don't allow the use of this controller. What you can do if you want to continuously look for an internet connection is to just have it try to connect again after a period of time. But beware of putting yourself into an infinite loop as you're waiting for internet connection. Now, the following are functions that you must have when you use the IT de I detailed store listener. These are inherited functions, I believe. Um, so the first one is on purchase felled. This is when someone goes to make a purchase, but then for some reason, the purchase does not work. This can be, uh, as you see it, as you saw in the video at the beginning of this, if you go to buy it and then you cancel or close the application, that would count as a purchase failed. Anytime you do not buy something. So all I do here, you don't have to do anything, but I just notify the user that the purchase failed. Then there's when the initialization failed. So when these services have failed, but they didn't throw an exception, I just go in here and I turn off my purchasing button because something failed along the way. Perhaps it was just the server was down at that time. Then there's a second on initialize failed where on top of sending an error, they also send a message. And I treat it the same as my on initialize failed with just an error. The next one is when you are processing your purchase. During the process purchase, I just call store controller dot confirm pending purchase of my product. Now, yes, my product is null at the beginning, but you'll see later on that in the process of adding the purchase, I add value to this product. Then I just give them a message to let them know that they've actually purchased the product. So when you get here, the purchase should be finished and you can provide the item that they just sold. If you're wanting to remove advertisements, it's here where you will where you will remove the advertisements. If it's um, unlocking game assets, then it's here where you will actually unlock those game assets. And finally, I return that the purchasing process result has completed. Okay, now another one is the on purchase felled, which on top of a product takes a reason. So, it's similar to this on purchase failed, but instead of a purchase failed description, it takes a purchase failed reason. And so I just treat it the same as the one above, just like with the two on initialized failed methods. Now we have on initialized where things are actually initialized. Okay, so. The uninitialized comes with the iStore controller and the iExtension provider. So this is the store controller and the extension provider that it has been initialized with. And Unity deals with all of this in the back end so you don't have to worry about any of it. 
And so I just assign mine to what Unity gives. And then I make sure that my buy me a coffee button is active just in case there is something else that turned it off, but now you have the store controller. Now I have my button press event. So the on pointer click is my button event for my on I pointer click handler. So this is when someone has actually tried to purchase my uh, product. So what I do is I say that my product is equal to the store controller products and then I find the product by ID using my product ID then I say store controller initialize purchase of the product and then right away I confirm the pending purchase of the product so you can have many different buttons here and then just make sure that you are passing in the proper product ID Okay, and then the uh, initialize purchase and confirm pending purchase will go through and start the whole process where you can end up getting the purchase filled or you can actually go all the way to the process purchase where the purchasing has been completed. And those are the steps to going through actually adding and applying the in-app purchases to Unity. Now, just a few uh, words of wisdom. You can apply the purchases using player prefs to save the player data. However, if you're doing something like unlocking half of the game with this, then I believe it would be much better to use a database such as Firebase with the Firestore or real-time database. I have a few videos on that, so look at my profile if you're interested in learning more about how to implement a Firebase database. But then you are storing the data online and basing it off of the user profile that they have authenticated with. Instead of with the player prefs, you are saving it in the game data and they can take their game, copy it, and give it to their friend, and now the friend has that those items unlocked as well. Now doing it with the Firebase method, you would need to force them to connect to the internet anytime they wanted to use these products. So it's a give and take. One of them is more secure. The Firebase is much more secure than saving in player prefs, but the player prefs gives the player more access to it. Anyways, Thank you for watching the video. I hope that this has helped you add your own in-app products or in-app purchasing to your application. And let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or ideas for my next video. And have a great day.